first thing I'd want to see for sure is yeah. contraception is not bad. Depo is not bad. No. Now the other question, mm -hmm. Lynn, do contraceptives cause cancer? Right, okay. Mm. So contraceptives do not cause cancer. They do not, in fact, if anything, a lot of the contraceptives we use are protective against certain types of cancers. <laughs> Hello, good morning, and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, you all know I brought you the story of W, and she has used Depo, and she's not able to give, she's not able to have a child. And I went on and I told you, please, please, please suggest for me someone, a guy now, who can be able to come and talk to us because that conversation was heavy. You all went in. My guest today comes highly recommended by you, and I just want to say thank you for being active participants and even for vouching for her to be here on the show she's going to tell us what was wrong with that conversation what are some of the things that we are about to debunk matters contraceptives and now without further ado please allow me to let her introduce herself good morning morning gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> how are you i'm good thank you Karibu sana very excited to be here yes. thank you so much for inviting me yes it's such a pleasure and an honor to actually you know in thank person you. you're like this great human oh, come on. <laughs> you're doing amazing you. work amazing yes. work yeah so my name is dr claire kinuthia yeah. i'm an obstetrician and gynecologist yeah. practicing here in nairobi mm -hmm. Um, I've been a gynae for seven years now. Seven yeah. years. So everyone looks at me and they say I look too young, but no, I I'm know. actually very qualified yes. and pretty experienced at yeah. this point. Yeah. Our director, Edwin Ochieng, mm. also said, Doc, even me, I looked at you <laughs> and I'm like, you are so young. Yeah, I know. No, Nimwili. 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 <laughs> Nimwili. Nimwili. Yeah, Nimwili. Preach. Yes. preach what you practice what you preach. You practice yeah. what you preach. <laughs> Thank you for taking your time. Absolutely. You know, even when I reached out to you and I know we had to wait to shoot this two weeks mm. later, mm. I was like i have to do this show with you yeah. because you are what my guests my audience want yeah. sorry i was away so thank you no. for being patient as mm -hmm. well no, 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 no. it's an honor to have you because yeah. you know sometimes when you put something out there and the audience from different places mm. they're just telling you dr k they call you dr k oh nice yes. oh, that's so cool okay, <laughs> okay. 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 Name you, I uh, that's cool doctor. i like that yes dr k dr k <laughs> yeah. I, I had to do right by them mm. you know and i just want to say thank you for coming absolutely you watched the story of w yes yes i did yes. and unfortunately it's not new mm -hmm. it's actually a story that's shared by a lot of women yeah. here and across africa in general mm -hmm. because we don't have enough information when it comes to how our bodies work yeah. first of all just mm -hmm. the very basics mm -hmm. what is normal what is not normal mm -hmm. um, what is sex and what should I expect yes. what are the benefits yeah. what are the good things about it and what are the dangerous things yeah. about it yeah. unfortunately right from the start you're told it's bad it's dangerous mm -hmm. don't talk to boys that's usually the thing you're told as a girl boys are dangerous don't talk to boys mm -hmm. you'll get pregnant mm -hmm. but you don't understand how that happens yes. or what exactly about this boy makes yeah. me get pregnant. Mm. So I feel like that's where the problem starts, is mm. that we don't have enough information about how our normal bodies work, yeah. and therefore then understanding something complicated like contraception mm. becomes very difficult. Yeah. So what tends to happen is women will talk to each other instead of coming in to talk to the doctor, because there also seems to be a fear yes. of doctors. Yeah. And maybe it's from the previous generations where it was difficult to talk honestly and openly with your doctor, mm -hmm. especially when it came to your sexual health, yes. your reproductive health, health mm -hmm. we are made to feel shame about certain parts of our bodies Absolutely. so you feel like okay if I go to talk at any judge mm. unfortunately that is you know a sad reality everyone believes mm -hmm. but your gynecologist especially our training is f about your sexual health mm -hmm. we're not shy yeah. we're not going to judge you we actually are here to give you the information mm -hmm. so thank you for having me because again yeah. it's also rare to see you hear one side of the story and then you don't get the expert exactly. opinion so this yes. is a very good balance to yeah. have because yeah. W story, story is valid, yes. very valid. Yeah. We're not going to devalue her experience because mm. it's her own. Yeah. But there are many misconceptions and you could hear many myths yes. and many, um, there's a bit of propaganda mm. which we'll discuss in a bit of yes. detail. Yeah. Um, so it's important that we debunk this and mm -hmm. make sure that everyone understands mm. Contraceptions are not bad. It's not a bad thing to be on family planning. So contraceptions are not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. You should not be sitting there being afraid, gosh, if I use contraception, I'll never get pregnant. Mm. If I use 
certain types of contraception, they're going to affect me in certain ways. Mm -hmm. Just like any other medicine, there are benefits and there are the yes. side effects. Mm -hmm. There are risks to some people, mm -hmm. depending also on their own history. Yeah. So it's important to understand that it's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Not every woman can use the same contraceptive. Mm -hmm. Not a bad experience that I had doesn't mean that when you go to use the same one, you'll have the same experience. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you talk to a broad range of women, you'll hear very different descriptions of yes. their experience of yeah. one type of contraception. Yeah. So in general, we have a lot of options also, mm -hmm. so that if one doesn't work for you, something else will work. will work. And this is why it's important to start with your doctor. Mm. The unfortunate thing is, as women as well, we also go over the counter, unaongea na chemist, unaambiwa atumia hii, ama atumia hii. That's a big problem we have, because yeah. a lot of these are regulated medications, mm. and it should be prescribed by your doctor. Mm. And the reason why we say that is because, as a person, as an individual, you have your own health issues, yeah whether you're a healthy person or it's your family that has genetic issues yeah, yeah. that can affect the way a contraceptive works mm -hmm. for you. So that's why we say it's not one size fits all. Okay. Something that my mom used can be problematic for me. Oh. That close. Yes. Something that my sister is using can be problematic mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to go in as an individual, yeah. sit with your doctor, yeah. discuss your own medical history, mm -hmm. your family medical history, yeah. and your own lifestyle issues. Yes. Because another thing is convenience. Because again, we demonize things. You tell women, no, you should use this because. But if it doesn't work for me, if I can't take a pill every day, mm. that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Let me find a longer term method that mm. works for, for me. me. So it's important that we just keep debunking the issues. And yes. just first thing I'd want to say for sure is yeah. contraception is not bad. Depo is not bad. Now that one. <laughs> that one. You know, even me, just yeah. from W's story, mm. I, even if right now you recommend Depo You'd or whatever, away. I cannot use yeah, it. Because no, it's not only W, it's so many women who are came yes. out with, oh, Depo, mm. oh, first, is Depo illegal? Okay. Should it be here? That's such a good question. Yeah, should it? Yes. Because um, the audience were like, Lynn, this was banned mm. in Western uh, countries. countries. Why are we using yeah. it? Why yeah. is it being sold to Africans? They mm. want us to die. <laughs> they don't want us to have kids. True. Yeah. So again, propaganda. What's depo so depo in mm. full, it's depo provera. Oh. So it's a type of progesterone. I, mm. There's really no need for me to go into like technical terms, oh, but yes. yeah, <laughs> it's a type of progesterone, yeah. which is one of the uh, hormones we find in the female body. Mm -hmm. So for you to get your period, you have a balance between estrogen and progesterone every month, yeah. balancing each other out, mm -hmm. so that you have ovulation, which is a release of an egg, mm -hmm. and then if you don't get pregnant. Yeah. That lining that was preparing to hold the baby mm. is not necessary. Mm -hmm. So you shed it, and that's why we get a period. Okay. So what has happened now with contraceptives is we take those same hormones that mm -hmm. we produce in our bodies, mm -hmm. estrogen and progesterone, mm -hmm. and we give you at a bit of a higher dose yeah. than what you produce, yeah. and that blocks ovulation from oh, happening. Okay. But th it's reversible. Mm -hmm. So it's only a short term. Mm -hmm. As long as you're using the method, yeah. then the egg is not released, and mm -hmm. therefore, for some people, then your period doesn't come. Mm -hmm. Because the message that the lining should be formed is yeah. not there to mm -hmm. begin with. Mm -hmm. So one of the common questions I get from women is, OK, I'm on a method, and I'm not getting my period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the thing they're concerned. Mm -hmm. eh? Is it accumulating somewhere? Yes. But no, it's not. What's happening is, because your body is not releasing an egg, the lining is not necessary. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't form mm -hmm. the lining to mm -hmm. begin with. So mm -hmm. there's nothing to shed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, especially progesterone-only methods, will cause your cycle to change. Okay. because they block ovulation mm -hmm. and so you don't get a regular period or you don't get your period at all mm -hmm. or for some women you mm -hmm. get continuous bleeding. Yeah. But if you have continuous bleeding, come back to your doctor and we'll be able to balance it mm -hmm. so that either you get a regular period or you okay. stop getting your period. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the things you have to think about when you're mm -hmm. choosing an option. Mm -hmm. So Dipoprovera specifically, it's a longer term progesterone only mm -hmm. method mm -hmm. and it's given as an injection once every three months. Mm -hmm. So it works in your body mm -hmm. for uh, 12 weeks, yeah. 3 months. Huh? Yeah. And we give it into a muscle and it's released slowly. So usually mm -hmm. it'll be given into the bum mm -hmm. and then it's released slowly into the bloodstream mm -hmm. during the course of that mm -hmm. three months. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's a high dose, it's dangerous, mm -hmm. no. It's still being released yes. in very small yeah. doses. Yeah. So the way it works, again, like I've said, it stops you from ovulating yeah. and a lot of times then it stops you from getting your period. Okay. But usually only during the time that you're using mm -hmm. it. The question about it being banned. So historically, maybe I can give a bit of history. Yes, Depo was first brought into um, production into the market in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And initially, again, it's a time where medical innovation was at a very high rate, mm -hmm. and they're discovering new drugs and mm -hmm. trying to understand how they work, and mm -hmm. they have them tested, and all the trials were being done at the time. Mm -hmm. 
So when it was introduced, it wasn't really, um, so if you look at America specifically, they have the FDA who approve medications. Yes. So it wasn't really initially approved because the studies were still ongoing. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why it was banned technically, yes. if you read online, <coughs> honestly, if you read mm -hmm. online, and this mm -hmm. is the danger with Google, mm -hmm. you will find the information that depot has been banned. Mm -hmm. What you need to look at is the details. The papers and everything that you see that say it's been banned are from 1980. Mm -hmm not 2022, mm, <laughs> 1980. 1980. And the reason why it was banned is because one study came out that um, associated a higher risk of cancer mm. in dogs because of progesterone use. Mm -hmm. But dogs and humans have nothing in common. Yes. And it's actually common knowledge that dogs are affected by hormones mm -hmm. in a very dangerous, very different way mm -hmm. than humans. Mm -hmm. So the closest animal studies yes. you can say that are relevant mm -hmm. <coughs> to humans mm -hmm. is maybe monkeys, you mm -hmm. know, primate studies. Yes. Um, so after that study came out, there was fear, mm -hmm. and they had to go back in and investigate yeah. further. But after clarifying, it was now approved. Mm -hmm. So that ban was lifted. Yeah. And it wasn't even really a ban, it was a go slow, let's mm -hmm. first investigate mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking up information about the Provera and you say, the Provera ban, You're gonna find it. articles will come up, mm. but they're from the yes. 80s. Yeah. So you need to be careful also on how you digest information mm -hmm. from the internet. Mm. So since that time, Depo Provera is approved and safe for use in multiple countries wow. across the world. Okay. So it's actually one of the most common used contraceptives by mm. women because yes. again, it's longer term yeah. and a lot of women don't want the issue of a period. Yes. So like, Mimi, pads. Okay. That Stabby. economy, mm. really, in a car, yeah, <laughs> buying tampons, yeah, buying it's pads, it's, and then they're always the so expensive. Yeah, oh, yeah. And the cramps. <laughs> and the cramps, yes. exactly. Yeah. And the other thing about the Provera, it's not just a contraceptive. In gynecology, it's actually a very good medication. Mm. So we use it as hormone replacement for women who are going through menopause, just to manage some of the side effects that they have. Mm -hmm. So we use it together with estrogen mm. to balance out the hormones. Okay. Uh, we also use it for managing um, issues to do with your period. Yes. So women who have very bad cramps mm. or women who have very long periods or have very painful periods, mm. um, very heavy flow, yeah. we use Depo Provera to okay. help those um, symptoms, symptoms that they have. Mm -hmm. We also use it for management of some cancers. Mm -hmm. This is how amazing this is. It was thought to cause cancer. It's actually used to treat some cancers. Really? Yes. This so it's Depo. in humans. Depo. So in humans, some types of cancers that are hormone dependent, mm -hmm. we use Depo Provera to treat them. So okay. things like... Um, mm some types of breast cancer and sometimes subtypes of um, uh, endometrial cancer. So mm -hmm. it's used to prevent endometrial cancer. That's mm -hmm. the lining of the uterus. Mm -hmm. So because it stops you from forming the lining, mm -hmm. it's protective okay. against endometrial cancer. Yeah. So it's actually very beneficial mm -hmm. for that. For some other medical conditions, it's beneficial. So we find it's not a treatment for, but for women who have seizures yes. or have epilepsy, yes. they find that we have lower rates of mm. actual seizures mm. when they are on something like mm -hmm. Depo Provera. Okay. For women with sickle cell disease, mm. it also helps them because they have less crisis. Wow. So it's an amazing drug. Really? It's also used to manage someone who has iron deficiency anemia mm. because of heavy bleeding, mm -hmm. especially during their period. Mm. Depo Provera is something we use oh. for them. Wow. So you can't demonize such a drug. Mm. Yes, it does have side effects, what, just what, what like any other. So with majority of hormonal methods, mm. we're giving you a hormone that you produce at higher dose than what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your normal cycle. Yes. As a woman, just before your period, you experience some things. You'll yeah. notice that you're bloated, you'll notice yes. you have breast tenderness, yes. you have difficulty it, with digestion. Breast tenderness, I'm a breast pain. Pain. Mine is you know? pain. <laughs> they become <laughs> huge and pain. painful yes. and very unbearable. Yes. So when you're on a hormonal method, these symptoms can worsen. Mm -hmm. So you start to notice some women who have who are using depot will say, yes, I get very bad breast pain. I have bloating. Mm -hmm. I have weight gain. That's a common one. Mm -hmm. um, I have like my period disappeared completely yes. or I'm bleeding irregularly mm -hmm. or I'm bleeding continuously. Mm -hmm. So all of those issues, you need to just go back in to see your doctor okay. because sometimes it's manageable, sometimes yes. it's just not the method for you. Mm -hmm. So if it's not for you, we recommend something, something different. Mm -hmm. uh, other common um, issues is especially if you have medical conditions. Mm -hmm. So progesterone only methods are safer for people who have family history of blood clots, mm -hmm. Um, strokes, heart disease, mm -hmm. these are safer. So depot would be a better option for someone like that than the pill because mm -hmm. estrogen is dangerous for yes. them. So again, it has its risks as well as its mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. So like I'm saying, with majority of hormonal methods, you have to have a conversation with your doctor yeah. because some of those side effects also are not tolerable. Mm -hmm. You might be the type of woman who I really have to see my period every month. Yes. So why would I put you on depot program? Yeah. 
then I'll just give you anxiety for no reason. So that's one of the biggest mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue with DEPO is there's a slower return to fertility or a slower return to regular cycles mm -hmm. because it's a longer term mm -hmm. method. So we have to wait for the three months to end and then some women, their metabolism is slow. Mm -hmm. So it takes a bit longer before it clears from the bloodstream. Okay. So even after I took my last injection several months ago, yeah. up to maybe six to 10 months later, yes. you're still not getting a mm -hmm. period or if it comes, it's still irregular. Yeah. For those ones, we strongly advise come back in and see your doctor mm. because there are medical options to help bring your cycles back, back to, normal. to normal. So oh. when I was listening to W's case, mm. the thing that stood out for me was inconsistency with follow-up. Mm. Because right from the beginning, she should have been on treatment plans that mm. can get her period back. Mm. And it's not one time. You'll come in several times. That's the other thing people need to understand. Medicine is not instant. Treatment of conditions is not instant. Yeah. So sometimes it takes a bit longer for your cycles to come back. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't necessarily have your period to come back yeah. for you to be fertile. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes your fertility will return. Because like I said, ovulation yes. happens. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't get pregnant, your period comes. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll ovulate and get pregnant even before your first period yeah. has come back. Yeah. So there are many factors. Yes. And in her specific case, mm -hmm. I'm not until we examine her, until we know, you know, take yes. a few tests, yes. it's difficult to actually know what the underlying cause is mm -hmm. because other medical issues could be at mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, for fertility specifically, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have had your period. And if in her case she was interested in having children, we can do fertility treatments despite her period. Really? So you can actually start fertility treatments and be able to conceive. It's not about waiting. Because <laughs> this is the thing. Yeah. If I am not seeing my period, mm -hmm what are the chances I'll ever get pregnant? So because majority of the people mm. equate periods to, to fertility. fertility. Yes. Periods to but if fertility. that was the case, think about it. Yeah. How many women have a regular period and are still not able to conceive? Uh, many. Very many, mm. right? The, mm. the first thing they tell you, no, I get a period every mm. month. Na kila mwezi nangoja kupata mimba, unfortunately, period in mm. So it's not necessarily true that because you have a regular period, you're going to conceive. Wow. Even as humans, just as human beings, as women, we only have a 70% chance of conceiving in 12 months. Oh. So it's not 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's not that every time you have sexual contact mm -hmm. that you're going to get pregnant. Yes, yes. The other thing is it changes with age. Yeah. The younger you are, the easier it is to get pregnant. Mm. The older we get, the mm. harder it is. There's also the fact that we are born with all our eggs, they go um, maturing and aging yes. just as we do. Yeah. So there's all these factors that come into play that affect your ability to mm -hmm. conceive. So that's why you'll find women who are a bit older yeah. are struggling a bit to be able to conceive. Mm versus when you're young, mm. just an oops, yes. just like this. Oops. And <laughs> it's here. You're pregnant. Yes. So it's it's another thing to debunk, that yeah. your period is not necessarily the indicator for mm. fertility. You mm. might be sitting there saying, yeah, I get my period every month. When I'm ready, I'll just conceive. Mm -hmm. Then you find that you have issues mm. conceiving. Yeah. So for W, mm -hmm. right now, in a layman's language, mm -hmm. what should she do? See her gynecologist. Mm -hmm. Go in for, start again, start afresh. Mm -hmm. First of all, forgive herself. There's no... I, the thing I kept hearing from her is she's blaming herself because she chose to use a contraceptive, meaning she believes contraception is bad. And that's what I want us to debunk. It is not a bad thing to use the contraceptive. It may be that there was not enough information to help her choose the right one for her body, mm -hmm. the right one for her lifestyle, mm -hmm. and for the duration she wanted to postpone mm -hmm. babies. Mm -hmm. So there are many factors you have to think about as a woman. Mm -hmm. And it helps if you come into a specialist, because yes. then we are able to direct you. Mm -hmm. So given where she has reached frustration, many years of struggling, having feeling like I've given up, and mm -hmm. also blaming herself, yes. um, she needs to just Let's move on from there. Yeah. Just as she's practicing self-love, yes. we move on mm. and start fresh. Mm. Given that she's older, many other factors have come into have come play. Into so we play. need to investigate and yes. see what exactly was happening, what yeah. is happening now, yeah. and what needs to be done. Yeah. It might be a simple, and I'll be very honest, from a lot of experience I've had with women, it's just a simple thing of not understanding your cycle. Because you're not fertile every day of your yes. cycle. Yes. And a lot of women believe, I can't get pregnant on my period. Because yes, you can. Depending I, on your yes, cycle. I wanted to ask that question <laughs> later on, yeah. but it was one of the most requested mm. questions. People are like, Lynn, ask the guy now. Mm. How exactly do we calculate safe days? days? Okay, we will go into that. We will in go detail. into that. Yeah, because yes. it's something that you need to understand, mm. and it varies with different women because mm. of the length of our cycles. Mm -hmm. no, not everyone has the same yes. or the standard 28 day cycle you hear about. Yeah. 
the normal range is from 21 days to 35 mm. days. So depending on where you fall, mm -hmm. it's different for different people. Yes. For someone with a very short cycle, 21 days, you mm. can conceive because mm. you ovulate so soon after your period or mm. just as your period is ending mm. that you can actually conceive on your period. So you're thinking you're safe and you're not. Mm. So there are many things we just need to understand, the nuances about how our bodies work mm. and then you're able to understand. Okay contraception in general, mm. and especially so something like Depo-Provera. Mm. So the other thing to understand about Depo, it's not the only one of its kind. So if you say, I would never use Depo, but I'll use an implant. I'll use the Implanon or Jadel, yes. or I will use Mirena, for example, mm. the IUCD that has mm. uh, hormones on it. Mm. All of those are still progesterone-only methods. It's the delivery system that's different. Mm. So if you're going to have side effects mm. from Depo-Provera, they are very likely to be similar on mm. these other methods. Mm. So it's about understanding how mm. these options work. What's IUD? IUD is intrauterine. So IUCD is the full term. Intrauterine yes. contraceptive device. Mm -hmm. The coil. Oh. Every woman calls it coil. Uh, <laughs> talk to us about <laughs> that one. Yes. So the coil, um, we have two primary different ones now. Mm -hmm. We have non-hormonal. So mm. when you hear women talking about Stucky kutumia hormones are used as non-hormonal. Mm. They're usually talking about the copper IUCD, which is the copper intrauterine contraceptive device, mm -hmm. or the copper coil. Mm -hmm. That's the most common one everyone knows about. Yes. And then we have, and that one is non-hormonal. It yeah. uses copper, the metal, yes. to prevent pregnancy. And I'll go into the details. Okay. And then there's the non, and then there's the hormonal version. Mm -hmm. And now there are many brands, but mm. the most common one that you would hear about is probably Mirena. Mm. And that one is used because instead, if you had an allergy to copper or you have issues, because there are also side effects with the copper mm -hmm. one, we can switch you to the hormonal mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. as long as you also don't have issues mm -hmm. with hormones. Mm -hmm. And that one is um, used instead of the copper on the device, it has progesterone, mm -hmm. which is what we're talking about, similar to mm -hmm. Depo-Provera. Mm -hmm. So these are considered long-term reversible methods that are put into the uterus and they sit there and physically prevent you from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So how they do that, they don't tend to cause you to stop ovulating. So they don't affect ovulation. They actually work just within the mm -hmm. uterus. Mm -hmm. So you'll still be getting your regular cycles, mm -hmm. majority of women, mm -hmm. except maybe on the hormonal one, it might change yes. your system. But regular cycles are common. Mm -hmm. It's just other side effects based on that. But the way they work is they sit in the uterus and they thin the lining so that it's not conducive mm -hmm. for implantation. Mm -hmm. They also block access of sperm, so they thicken the mucus of the cervix, so yes. sperm transport is impeded, yeah. and also the transport through the fallopian tubes mm -hmm. is impeded. Mm -hmm. And because fertilization happens in the tubes, then that's how they prevent yeah. pregnancy. Yeah. So as long as your um, IUCD is sitting in the right position, mm -hmm. the chance of getting <coughs> pregnant is minimal. Yes. Their, their success rate is 99.8%, mm -hmm. something like that. So wow. you have a 0.2% chance mm -hmm. of, because every method also has a failure rate, mm -hmm. let's also be clear, there's nothing that's 100% effective. Mm -hmm. So with <coughs> IUCDs, they work really well for women who are looking for very long-term options. Mm -hmm. So the hormonal one is up to five years if you're using it to prevent pregnancy. Okay. For the non-hormonal one or the copper one, yes. it's up to 10 years. You have variations, there's three year, five mm -hmm. year and 10 year mm -hmm. plans. And it's on the dosing of yeah. the copper. So these ones work locally. So a lot of women will tell you, I like them because I don't get the systemic side effects that mm. hormones would mm. cause. Mm. These ones will be restricted to within the uterus, mm -hmm. but they do have their own issues. Like yeah. the copper one, most commonly it can worsen your cramps and um, it can cause heavier periods mm. or longer periods mm. when you get your period. Mm. For such women, and especially women who already have bad cramps mm. or you already have long periods mm -hmm. or very heavy periods, yeah. you see now I would be crazy to yes. put you on a copper oh. IUCD. Mm. So as your doctor, with that history, I'd recommend a hormonal IUCD wow. instead. Because that yeah. one, like we said, causes the lining to be very thin, so yes. your period becomes lighter, yeah. and it actually stops the contractions that cause cramps, so mm. your, your cramps actually improve. Oh. So yeah. that's how progesterone works. Yes. So there's something for everyone. For everyone. Yeah. The, yeah. the question was, Lynn, ask Gaina, mm. after how long can I get pregnant mm -hmm. after removing the coil? It, the coil is almost immediately mm. because you're still ovulating. Yes. So it will be depending on when in your cycle you remove it. If you are ovulating, you can conceive immediately. Mm. If you are waiting, let's say you are on your period or you're removing it around the time of your period, yeah. we'll wait till your next ovulation mm -hmm. cycle and then you can be able, so your return to fertility is pretty immediate. Yes. Depot and the other um, implants and the ones that you put into the bloodstream take yeah. a bit longer. Mm -hmm. So that's why you hear there's a delay for your period to come back yes. to normal. But for someone who is on an IUCD, more likely than not, their yes. period was pretty regular, okay. even if it became really light. Because mm. on the hormonal one, it might just be spotting. Mm. You might have a bit of sensation of a mm. period coming, mm. then you get a few spots, mm. and that's what your period is. Okay. The minute you take it out, yes. your fertility should return immediately. Should return. Mm. What's with contraceptives and gaining weight? 
because ah, okay. I saw many people are like, Talking the moment I started using yeah. this contraceptive, yeah. I added so much weight, I had my, I had pimples, mm. all that, well, what's, what, what's with that? So again, the way hormones, we are using the hormones that you yes. have in your body. So yes. the same way, just before your period, you'll get acne, you get breakouts, you notice that someone has like a pimple or yes. some a rash yeah. that comes up yeah. because of the normal levels of progesterone mm -hmm. in their body increasing. Mm -hmm. It's the same side effect that you would see if you're using a progesterone only mm -hmm. or in a hormonal method in mm -hmm. general. So mm -hmm. they mimic the side effects that you would get as a normal woman. Mm -hmm. It's just that because it's a higher dose, it might be more pronounced. Yeah. With weight gain specific, uh, specifically, mm. progesterone is the hormone of pregnancy. So remember how you gain weight during pregnancy yes. and how it keeps you, it's supposed to help the baby mm. grow in a healthy mm. manner. It increases your appetite, it makes you feel calm and mm. relaxed. Mm. And so you find that women will eat more and therefore the weight <sighs> will also come on. So we have to combine a method with discipline as well. So if I tell you one of the pos possible side effects of your contrast is to gain weight mm. we also have to look at lifestyle try and eat as healthy as possible try and exercise as much as possible and if you're still gaining weight to up to a dangerous level let's consider a different method mm. because like I said there's many options to okay. choose from so you don't have to sit and suffer mm. and yet you could use something different what can I use as a contraceptive and not gain weight what's there in the market non-hormonal methods mm. um, barrier methods like condoms mm -hmm safeties, natural mm. methods. Mm. So if you're to use natural methods, then mm. it's unlikely to change your weight at all. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are problematic with weight gain, and it's not just weight gain, some mm. women lose weight. Mm. So it's not guaranteed. Some women lose excessively, we have yes. to stop the yeah. methods. Some gain excessively, we have to stop. Yeah. Others, it actually doesn't change. Yeah. So that's why I can't say it's a blanket. Yes. Like when you're trying to make that decision, don't yeah. assume you will gain weight. Mm. Let's talk to with your doctor. If you don't have any risks, we usually yeah. say, we're going to try whichever method you choose. Keep an open mind, at least the first three to six months mm. to see if you, your body will be okay on this method. Yeah. You can't leave the office saying, Sasa, I'm sorted. Yes. You never know yeah. because you might have a side effect yeah. that someone else didn't mm. have or you might use something that I recommended. Yeah. Me, it works for me. Mm. You, it completely destroys Doesn't. your system. Yeah. Yeah. So it's best to have work mm. as a team with your doctor and it's mm. a continued relationship. Mm. It's not just a one-off mm. and the most dangerous, it's not a chemist or small clinic visit. This mm. is a proper professional consultation mm. that you should be having. Okay, mm. so let me take you just back. What mm. I'm getting, because I think what m many people were scared of mm. is the moment I started using contraceptive, I missed my periods. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. There is no, a normal it's side effect. Normal it's side a normal effect. side effect. And there's no long term if issue with your period not coming. Mm. So some of them will for sure give you regular periods. So if you're using a combined option when yeah. it's hormonal that mm. has both estrogen and progesterone, mm -hmm. usually you use it for three weeks and yes. then you take a week break yeah. and you get a period. Yeah. But it's not a period, it's a withdrawal bleed. You mm. only get it because you've come off of mm -hmm. the hormones. Mm -hmm. So if you continued taking the pill without a break, also yes. your period would disappear. Okay. If you're on a progesterone only method, that's the one that's more likely to change your cycle. Yeah. So some women, very few, will have regular cycles. Yes. Majority will have very irregular, so mm. many months and then a period comes, mm. many months and then a period comes. Mm. Others just stop getting their period altogether. Mm. Mm. The ones we have as a problem and we actually want to treat yes. are the ones who have bleeding continuously. Mm. So if you're spotting every day or you're yes. having a bleed every day or your period comes and it just doesn't stop for mm. two weeks, mm. that, that needs to be addressed. Mm. But if your period is not coming at all, it's not a bad thing. There's no lining to shed. That's all that it is. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you come off the method, as your body clears the hormones from the system, your cycles will actually come back to they, normal. They'll come back. Mm. So I shouldn't worry. You shouldn't worry. You shouldn't panic. But I, like I said, if it's a concern for you, yes. if you, you have to see your period mm. every single mm. time, say that to your doctor. Yes. So that they push you away from those options that will make your period yeah. disappear. I want to move to safe days and I will want you to use me as an example. Okay. I'll just tell people this is when I get my periods because <laughs> even me, I have no idea how to how, count how to my count, safe days. Right? Okay. But before I do, all these things I'm hearing, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like, seeing a guy is expensive. I'm not going to say it's expensive. Okay. Let me say okay. it the way people say. Mm. Lean, it's expensive. Mm. It's just like therapy. Mm -hmm. People will say therapy is expensive. Mm -hmm. Going to see a guy in a session mm. is expensive. Mm. And then the things I'm hearing from you, I'm wondering, why is this knowledge not out there for people to, like, Access, yeah. Why is it that we cannot be able to access this? Mm. Even just like Kidogo just accessing, mm. even in schools, they mm. were saying like, you will yes. have no idea what yeah. we are talking about. Yeah. And then someone will be like, honestly, the economy is hard. Mm. They'll be like, Lynn, going to a guy in a book in a session is so expensive. Mm. Then if this does not work, I'll have to go again. First of all, are you guys as expensive? 
It depends on where you go. Mm. Let me put it like that. Mm. So the government has subsidized care. Mm -hmm. And so if you go to a government facility, more mm. likely than not, and especially if you are on NHIF, mm. you will see us for free. Mm. So it's a rumor. <laughs> Wait, what? If you go into your healthcare facility and a gynae is available and you're on NHIF, it's usually covered. That's the reality of our healthcare system. In the places where it works, it works really well. Wow. So it's again lack of information. In private practice, yes, if you're seeing a gynae private, yes, yes you'll have to pay a consultation fee yeah. and that's where people will say that it's expensive. Mm -hmm. But what is expensive? Yes. Because the dress what? you're wearing versus my consultation is um, more affordable. Yes. That's how that works. Yeah. So it's a mentality thing. And because people believe seeing a doctor is expensive, they refuse to come in. Mm -hmm. The other thing is majority of us are now on private insurance. Your insurance covers your consultation. Mm -hmm. So what is the story there? Mm -hmm. If you work for a company and they put you on insurance and you wanted to see a gynae, you come, you sign the paperwork and the insurance covers your mm -hmm. consultation. Mm -hmm. So you end up seeing doctors a lot of the time without ever reaching into yes. your pocket. Yeah. So that fear, I'd like to debunk that fear for yes. people because no, we're not expensive. It's understanding that you have options. Yes. That's what people don't understand. Oh. So if you are on insurance, if you're on NHIF, you're likely to be treated without actually paying out of pocket. Yeah. If you had to pay out of pocket, then you can consider a government facility because mm. those are subsidized. Mm. And they're amazing experts who work in the government mm. facilities. Mm. So it's not another thing people think, oh, I'll go and I'll be mistreated. That's I, not I true. I think that's what scares people. That's not true. The fact that they Back in the day, mm. because again, I also trained in government mm. system. Yes, it was a struggle because the systems were overwhelmed. Mm. But now that we have counties where we have seen that they're taking a bit of the burden off somewhere like Kenyatta, mm -hmm. specialists are being brought to your home to your area nearby. Yes. So you're able to see a gynae, instead of coming to Nairobi yeah. to see a gynae, you're mm. able to see the gynae in the local mm. hospital, in the mm. county hospital. Mm. So take advantage of those services mm -hmm. and stop running away from doctors. We're not scary, look at me. You're like the coolest we're human. Not scary. I even feel like I had to book <laughs> sessions after sessions after I sessions. Know. So we're not scary. Mm. And a lot of us now, especially now, we understand that you have access to the internet and there's a lot of scary information. Mm. I actually tell my patients, Sawa Soma, but write notes and come and ask me questions. Wow. Let's have a conversation because I'd rather you get the information mm. from the right source mm. rather than because if you are looking if you're looking for negative you will find negative. Cool. If you're looking to see deeper provera is bad, you will find all, you that, find information. all that information. If you're looking to find it's good, you will find the information. Yes. So what do you believe? Yeah. So come and talk to the person who has that mm. training mm. to be able to tell you. Mm. And it's very imp it's also important to say we are the gatekeepers of mm. healthcare, mm. the doctors and our medical council. Yes. So we're not going to give you something that is illegal or mm -hmm. something that is banned yeah. or something that you shouldn't be taking because mm -hmm. of your health. Mm -hmm. What's more likely to happen is your friend will recommend or buy for you or send you to a Facebook yes. page or an Instagram page and yes. you take concussions yeah. that affect you yeah. and then when you come to the doctor it's already too late. No. There's very little that we can do. You've already caused damage to various organs mm -hmm. because the other thing is I don't understand what it is but women have more faith in the Mitishamba. That's what I wanted herbal, to ask you. Is I don't know. Herbal. Things that you don't know. Because even in of. the email, mm. a lot of, like people would send, someone sent me an email, a couple of people and they were like, Lynn, I know Mitishamba nyeneza saidia uyo mama. Those are the problems what that are we the have. the dangers of these Mitishambas? Know. You know, that's the worst thing. What are you taking? So you come to me and I give you something that's colored brownish, greenish. You know, I can make it from here, the garden outside, and yes. mix the concussion and tell you this will cure you of. Kwanza, it cures you everything. Endometriosis, fibroids. Sidri, who? Sidri, what? And I'm Cancer. reading, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> What, what, what do you think this is, yeah. realistically? Mm. Yes, we have plants that even historically in Africa we used medicinally. Mm. And yes, there are things even your mom will tell you, you boil this in soup, it makes you home in Aisha. You use this, it's, those uh, are specific ones that you know. Yes. yes, even me, I can go and grow this aloe vera. And they're effective. And it's effective. Mm. But when somebody is selling you a concussion that you don't know the preparation. We, 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 government, uh, chemist, uh, government chemist has never tested it. So how do you imagine that it's safe for you? Okay. The same with um, sexual health issues. So women are always coming to me about douching, about using CG pals, CG what for tightening. I'm like, you don't, the kind That's of- That's our next conversation. <laughs> 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 yes. The dangers mm. there, because you're using something so dangerous. And the, the reality is the people who suffer, the bad effects, the side effects, the dangerous effects of these things oh. don't speak up. Oh. 
So you're left believing, if I use it, it's good for me. Yeah. So I would always advise against it. If it's something we can't prove what the contents are, a doctor is not going to recommend mm. it for you. If it's supplements that have been proven, yes. more likely than not, even mm. I will prescribe you mm. those supplements because mm. I know in an issue with subfertility, yeah. this will help improve your fertility, yeah. both women and men, men, because they come to see us yes. as gynecologists. Then the other issue, I think the major issue like we're discussing, is the lack of information. Mm -hmm. And that I believe stems from the fact that we refuse as Kenyans to have comprehensive sexuality education in our schools. Mm -hmm. Because you should learn about your body from yes. a very young age. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's been demonized to make it seem like they want to spoil my child, mm -hmm. they want to make them promiscuous, they mm -hmm. want to make them infertile, mm -hmm. that's what I hear about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it's the basic information you need to understand. Mm -hmm. Number one, how your body works. Yes. As a woman, how does my body work? Yeah. Why do I get a period every month? Yeah. What is the issue if I'm not getting a period? Mm -hmm. When I'm a teenager, what is the order of development? What Will I see my breasts growing oh. first or will I see my period coming mm -hmm. first? So that when I see other people, it's going to hap it's happening to yes. them. I don't panic yes. because I'm a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Because then the rest of my life I have this trauma from or I, I, in fact, the ones who, are get, who get a lot of trauma are the ones who develop fast. Mm. Because then I have big breasts as a yes. girl in high school. Everyone mm. sexualizes me yes. and treats me like, you know. Mm. And yet that's the normal genetics for me. You, yours is different. You'll develop a bit later. later. So if we had conversations like that from very early, it would remove a lot of shame and stigma. Yes. Number two is body autonomy. We need to learn that I am the governor of this ship. You have no right to touch me if I say don't touch me. I have to learn that I need consent to touch you. Yeah. If I have no consent, I have no business. Yes. Even the queue, you know how we queue in banks? Yes. Surely, surely. Yes. Imagine, well, imagine. Boss. <laughs> hey, I'm like, uh-uh. Uh -uh. Have please. you heard about personal mm -hmm. space? Mm -hmm. Please, please, so, please. So simple things like that. Can yeah. you imagine if we learned those from a young age? People would have boundaries and be able to respect mm. them. I believe if we learned about the fact that you tell your child from very early, this person should not touch you here. Yes. No, but even me as your mom, I should not touch you if you're not interested yes, in being and touched. People should not just hug you, hug and, you and kiss you and not everybody's auntie and uncle. And if we had those conversations from uh -huh. early, we would see fewer yes. cases of incest, of defilement, we would see fewer teenage pregnancies, mm. we would see fewer cases of abortion. Mm. And that's for sure yeah. because you have empowered someone with information. Mm. The other thing it covers is sex, what is healthy, what is normal, mm. versus where the risks are. Mm -hmm. And it also covers um, sexually transmitted infections yeah. as well as HIV mm. and contraception. Yeah. Those are things we can teach you from a very young age. And the key thing is age appropriate. I'm not going to sit down with your two year old and try and teach them big About things. It's age appropriate. Yes. Introduce things as the child is developing wow. and growing. Can you imagine if you and me and the generations of our time had this information? Would we have the rumors and the myths that we have running around no. about how our bodies work, about no. how contraceptives work? No. If we think about it that way, why are we stopping then our children learning mm. from an early age? Mm. We also know as parents, because I did not learn, I don't have the equipment to teach my child. Mm. So then I lean on a teacher who also didn't learn. Yes. So where are they getting this information? Mm. So it's important that we allow for this to start being taught very early, yeah. both in homes and, and in, schools, in schools. And so that we have empowered yes. people growing as adults who yeah. are able to make important decisions for themselves. themselves. That way women can understand, mm. if I don't want to have sex, I don't have to. Mm. If I don't want to get pregnant, it's my decision. Mm. If I want to use a contraceptive, when is it safe to start? Can I start as a teenager? Can I start as a, yes. an adult? Yeah. Can I start young? Can I start older? Mm. Are there methods that are recommended younger? Are there some that you shouldn't mm. be on? And that's the reality. There's nothing wrong with being a teenager on contraception mm. if you are already sexually, sexually active. active. But the way our laws, the way the church sits, it makes it sound yeah, like... I feel like you, we were talking <laughs> earlier on mm. how we actually need to have this conversation, mm. religion and contraceptives. Yes. Where do we strike Where a balance? Where do we strike a balance, you know? exactly. Yeah. One of the email that touched my heart was a mom of a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. So she's been giving her child mm -hmm. contraceptives. Mm -hmm. First, is it okay? Yes, to it is. Yes, it is. Doc. Yes, it is. is. It okay? Yes, it is. Because contraceptives, like I said, it's hormones that your body produces mm. normally. If you already have a normal cycle, because there are women, um, uh, girls who are by mm -hmm. 16, they're already getting a very regular period. Yes. There are methods that are safe for them. Yes. So not everything will be safe for everyone, like I keep repeating, mm. but there are methods that are safe for mm. them. This is an African problem. Let me also be very clear. In the West, majority of young women and girls start contraception in their teenage years safely and use them for years until they are ready to conceive. Mm -hmm. It's common knowledge that your mother will sit you down and talk about the pill, for example, the minute you start getting your period. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to get pregnant but you become sexually active, what are your options? Yeah. 
So then we end up with this stigmatization of young girls getting a lot of how many teenage pregnancies did oh, we see I've with COVID? So many stories like it's God. it's depressing, and it then is. the community that you then create because mm. this is a woman who is stigmatized by her community. Mm -hmm. That child is raised in such a hostile environment, mm. never knowing fathers. You know, yes. people run away and yes. act like mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> and yet. If you empowered her and she was able to make decisions for herself and insist, oh. I don't want to have sex yes. or use a condom or let me get on contraception, she has options. That's the thing I want you to understand. Either you can abstain, you can then choose to be in a faithful relationship and mm. use uh, your safe days or use um, barrier methods like condoms, mm. or you can choose a contraceptive method. All of those are valid options. Oh. And it's just about your own personal. So we're not even asking you to change who you are as a person. Mm. If me, it's abstainers, mm. me, I'll abstain. Mm. If you, you need contraception, use contraception. Mm. Because unfortunately for a mother like that, she's, first of all, if she told people that she has her daughter on contraception, she will be yeah, She even told me to ostracized. hide her name, yes. like not even Yes, she'll be treated so badly yeah. because already people like, first of all, you're making your girl promiscuous. That's the first thing she'll be told. What are you teaching her? Number two, she'll never have children when she's ready to have children. And all of those are false. Mm -hmm. So we do have to be very careful. Starting from the, you know, already it's a bit too late for some of us. We're already at the age that we yes. are. But information is needs to be availed. Yeah. So personally what I've been doing, and mm -hmm. I think maybe that's why people recommend me, is yeah. I put a lot of videos out and a lot of information on social media so yeah. that you can understand yeah. how your body works. Yes. Let's start from scratch because we're adults already. Mm. We're not going back to school to mm. be taught these things. Mm. Let's teach our children the right way, but for us, let's also get information yeah. so that we stop acting like... And it's usually lack of information or misinformation that makes you afraid of something like contraception. Yes. Like something, th okay, let me give an example that would maybe help the audience mm -hmm. understand. Please. How many times do you take Panadol for a headache without consulting your doctor? Many times. Have you ever known that it's a dangerous drug? Have you ever even comprehended in your head that your liver can fail because of Panadol? Mm. That's my point. Oh. That's what? my point. So we are very, very confident with some things without ever s talking about it, thinking about it. You've never Googled Panadol. Have you ever Googled never. side effects of Panadol? How now? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I mean about medical care. If you don't have the right information, you put yourself in danger. Yes. And especially here in Kenya, where things are very easily accessible mm. over the counter, mm. you can choose, I can tell you, go and take this, it will help you. That's the most dangerous thing mm. you can do. Because you, 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 it works for me. And I don't have any medical illnesses, but for example, if you are asthmatic, there are certain medications mm -hmm. Claire is using normally without yes. issues, it will kill you. Mm. The same with all yes. sorts of medications, including yes. contraception. Yeah. So the first thing to emphasize, stop fearing your doctor and go and have those conversations. Number two, seek out healthy, good sources yeah. of information. When you're Googling, Google with a bit of insight. So for example, if you're looking up Dipo Provera, the ban, like I said, mm. I, because when she said it, I was like, banned? If I may, I don't know this story, yes. and I'm a doctor. Mm. Let me look it up. And mm. sure enough, I found articles upon articles from the 80s. Which year are we in now? Yes. And even that ban, when you read, if you read a bit more detail, you see why it's banned. Mm. It's not that it has issues. Mm. Of course, there's propaganda, mm. because then I landed on websites that are pro-abstinence or yes. pro-church type of lifestyle. Yes. So then they are going to demonize yeah. the contraceptive. Mm. So again, if you're not reading with insight, you'll get very confused. You'll find things that say positive, you'll find things that say negative. negative. I don't, I no longer fight my patients. Read, so my Google is there, read. Write down questions. Come ask. Come me. and ask me. Don't that. believe everything from face value. Come, let's have a, con may I make time. Let's have a conversation. When you come in for a contraceptive conversation with your doctor, you shouldn't be coming in to say, doctor, I choose for me a method. That's not how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to give you all the information about the different methods. So we will start from uh, natural methods, so where we're doing your safe days. We'll talk about barrier methods because the only ones that keep you safe from STIs is things like condoms, yeah. the barrier methods. Yeah. We will then talk about hormonal methods. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about non-hormonal yes. methods. Yeah. All of these being reversible methods. Mm -hmm. Then we can also talk about permanent methods oh, wow. because then you talk about tubal ligation, tying your tubes mm -hmm. or vasectomies. Mm -hmm. I don't, that's another one that's demonized until you ask men if they'll get a vasectomy, they want to run away. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. So all of this information is available. Mm. So as you, when you come in for, this is what your consultation should yes. look like, just to help everyone as they mm. go in to see their doctor. Come in and ask me about family planning. Mm -hmm. My job as the doctor is to inform you about all the options that are available. Yeah. And then after that, I ask you about your preferences. Mm -hmm. So I will talk to you about convenience. What is your lifestyle like? Mm -hmm. And is it able, are you able to accommodate taking a mm -hmm. pill every day versus coming for an 
injection every month or every three months versus a long term yeah. method? Or are you completely done with children? Because if you are, let's go for a permanent yes. method. Oh. The next thing we're looking at is your health. Are you healthy? Do you have any medical conditions? Are you on long term medications? Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of medications you can't use, mm -hmm. certain contraceptives mm -hmm. with. Number two, do you have health conditions that predispose you to dangers when it comes to this contraceptive? Wow. So if you have a family history of clots, yes. you have no business going on the pill. None whatsoever. You have no business with an estrogen-based contraceptive. Mm -hmm. So again, I have to push you away from those ones. If you have family history, of certain medical conditions, again, we cannot put you on those issues, on yes. those medications, on those yes. contraceptives. Yeah. But also, like I said, if you have epilepsy, if you have sickle cell, if you have iron deficiency anemia, I may recommend a hormonal method, mm. a progesterone only, because it mm. will, it's been found to be beneficial. Yes. So we have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Then lifestyle. In terms of how many children do you want to have? Are you spacing between babies? Mm -hmm. Have you had a baby yet? Mm -hmm. Do you want us to postpone? How long are you postponing for? All those are things we will discuss yes. during that consultation. Yeah. And that's the only way we will find a method that works for you. We dealt with contraceptives and weight gain. Mm. Now the other question, mm -hmm. Lynn, do contraceptives cause cancer? Right, okay. Mm. So contraceptives do not cause cancer. They do not, in fact, if anything, a lot of the contraceptives we use are protective against certain types of cancers. Wow. So we find that women who use um, like progesterone only methods, it prevents endometrial hyperplasia, that's the lining of the uterus becoming too thick, mm -hmm. and also endometrial yes. cancer. So yes. it's actually preventing, mm. because then you're not creating this lining mm. regularly, so mm. that it's there the cells become abnormal. Mm. So it's actually protective for some of those wow. cancers. Again, it's used as treatment for some of the cancers. So some cancers, some types of breast cancer, some types of um, um, ovarian, mm. those are the ones that we'll mm. be looking at mm. to use I hormones to be able to treat them. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that they will cause. There is an increased risk for women with a family history of certain cancers with contraception. And this is why I'm saying this is not one size fits all. Yes. If you have a very strong history of certain types of breast cancer, if you have a very strong family history of mm -hmm. certain types of ovarian cancer, yeah. you should not be on certain types oh. of contraceptives. So it's again, it's for you as an individual. Stop sitting with other women and deciding in the salon, to see what it doesn't work mm, like that. It doesn't you work. actually have to sit with your doctor. So that we discuss, we will find that he's, that's how, what we do. You come in and you always wonder, why do I ask you about your last period? Why do I ask you about your mom's medical history or the family history? This is the reason, because mm -hmm. we will find those risks yes. and then I know which methods never to recommend. Mm. If you're already on the method, I immediately advise that, please, let's stop this method. Mm -hmm. It's actually dangerous for you. Let's use mm -hmm. a different method. Mm -hmm. And that way you would find that it's more likely than not we avoid the big complications to begin yes. with. Other times you also have to understand you've never used a method before, it's your first time, and you also don't have any family history or any you know, positive medical yeah. history, but you still get a very bad complication from a contraceptive. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say your follow-up is so important. When we start this conversation, you finished, you picked a method, don't just disappear. Come back. The doctor will tell you come back after a certain period of time, come back, because we're looking for oh. potential complications mm. or side effects mm. and then if they're there you see i'll be able to pick it up yes. early to prevent a bad outcome oh. sometimes um like i said contraceptives are not just used for contraception they're mm. also used as medication mm. in dermatology for example they use them for acne mm. so you can use the pill some types of pills to deal with um, hormonal acne yeah. But like I said, the pill has a high chance of mm. causing clots. Mm. So you might not have ever had that history in the family. You've never had clots yourself. But because you're on the pill, it's the first time you get them. Mm. Now, if you started the medication and I didn't tell you about potential side effects or I told you and you decided, ah, the way I'm feeling, I don't need to see the doctor again. See, I'm oh. sorted. Your chances of a very dangerous outcome are very high compared oh. to someone who comes back for follow-up. Then you'll tell me, you know, you don't think it's a symptom, mm. but you'll tell me, hey, doctor, since I started using this medication, I've been getting a kafani pain in my chest. For me, that's a danger sign. And immediately I will investigate further. Yes. And so we catch the fact that you had formed a clot, it's traveling to the chest and we prevent death yes. because the worst outcome for this scenario is death. death. So you have to start to, I hope to see that change with Kenyans, mm. is developing a continuous relationship with your doctor. That's that beautiful. treating yourself at home, yeah. last minute is when mm. you want to, again, mm. how many types of cancers do you hear? How many people are you hearing with different types of cancers that they're being diagnosed stage three, stage four? How many? Mm. 
But so what the question for me is, what is the gap? Mm. It's the fact that we don't have a habit, a healthy habit of yeah. health-seeking behavior. Oh, yeah. You don't think I should see a doctor for checkups. I'm a victim. You wait for a disease. I am a victim. <laughs> me, Kwanzaa, I will wait to feel funny. Exactly. So I go. And you'll use everything first. You'll, con you'll use all home remedies and yes. then you finally come. Yeah. That's the most dangerous approach because some cancers will present as bloating that persists for months. Stomach pain every time you eat. Then you notice, you come, by the time you're coming, we're telling you you're stage three or stage four of a certain type of wow. cancer. So it's so important to have that change in mindset that I should have a regular relationship with my doctor. I should have, with gynecologists, for example, you should have a, an annual visit with your gyne, mm. minimum, once a year. During pregnancy, we will see you more frequently. Yes. But during the time where you're not thinking about pregnancy or you're on a contraceptive, you're living your best life mm. once a year, mm. you should be getting your pap smears. Mm. Something like cervical cancer is a preventable cancer. You don't have to get cervical cancer anymore. Nobody should be dying of this cancer anymore. But if you don't come for a pap smear, how will we know? How will we know? How will you ever understand your risks? And the fear, the fear that no mini liambiwa a procedure ni uchungu. Dr. me was told it's very invasive, mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Come and let's have that mm -hmm. conversation. Because like I said, body autonomy is something we need to learn. If you came in, and yes, I need to do a medical procedure, but Lynn, you say to me, I'm not comfortable. That's the end. Until the point where you reach your comfortable, I will never force a procedure on yes. you. So that's the thing you need to understand with how medicine is evolving. Mm. We are much more communicative with our doctor, with our patients, mm. and we want you to come in and ask questions. And ask. It's not that time where you'd ask a question and I ignore you. In mm. fact, I don't even make eye contact. I just write <laughs> a prescription yes, and run tick. off. Mm. That's not where we are anymore. Mm. We actually want you to come in and ask the questions. Let's have the conversations. Because if you don't get that information from the right place, how can I blame you when something goes wrong, right? True story. Yeah. That's important. Mm. The other concern is P2. Okay. You know, the issue with P2, you'll mm. find that every time someone has sex mm -hmm. and the first thing they'll do is after morning mm -hmm. pills like, mm -hmm. hey, acha niende nini? Yeah. Niende P2. Or yeah. send your boyfriend to go get you nini? Yeah. The P2. P2. Yeah. What are the dangers with, with easy P2? Okay, so they are called emergency contraception for mm -hmm. a reason. Mm -hmm. So P2 is one type of emergency contraception. Yeah. That's the easiest, most common over the counter. Yes. Again, this is the problem we have with Kenya. We, instead of having regulations yes. with which medications should be over the mm -hmm. counter, everything's just mm -hmm. available depending on where you go. So um, P2 is one of those things we consider an emergency contraceptive, mm -hmm. which means you should only use it in case of emergency. Otherwise, if you're needing to use P2 regularly, you should be on a long-term contraceptive yeah. method so you should not be every day every other month i'm using it because the biggest concern with it is it will definitely change your cycle mm. the way it works is it stops you from ovulation mm -hmm. so it's a very high dose mm. of um, again the hormones that you produce from your body so because you're taking it on such a high dose it stops your ovulation from happening mm -hmm. so it postpones ovulation yes. so in case you had sex during the time just as before mm. ovulation is supposed mm -hmm. to happen, it will push that away mm -hmm. so that the chance of pregnancy reduces. Yes. However, it doesn't work if you've already ovulated. So if you've ovulated and today and you've had sex today, P2 will not work. Kaput. You'll actually probably get an ectopic pregnancy. So the pregnancy will implant somewhere else because of that high dose of mm. sudden hormones. So the biggest challenge with it is that regular use. It's not a medication you should be on on a regular basis. Yeah. So if as a woman you find, I had an oops last month, I used P2. This month I'm starting to think about P2 again, come and talk to your doctor mm. about a contraceptive wow. method. Yeah. Hey, today my people, we are learning. <laughs> wow, 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 we are learning. Doc, safe days. Safe days, yes. Safe <laughs> days, like honestly, mm. safe days. I am one of those people mm -hmm. who do not know how to, how count, to count my okay. safe days. Okay. So I'm going to give you the days I get my period. Okay. And then you will help me now. Understand. You will use yeah. me now, yeah. help people understand their safe days. Mm. So I g I'll get my periods on the 15th. Mm -hmm. So I know I've marked 15th. Okay. My periods are coming, okay. accompanied by very painful cramps. Okay. And Which means very you should be booking an appointment to see me. Hey. Because that's not normal. Really? <laughs> it's not normal. We don't consider it normal anymore. It's we, not we normal. You should check and see what is causing the pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I'm going to have like really painful cramps. Not my Oh, books are going to be really uh -huh. painful for like a week uh -huh. before, and then yeah. my, before mm. and then my periods are going to come on the 15th mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now how do i know my safe days okay so the first question i'll ask you because mm. 
calendar days is not the same as your cycle days. Okay. That's the first mistake women make. So it's very, very rare that a woman will have a period every single month, mm -hmm. the same date, mm -hmm. because months have different duration of time. Yes. So some months are 30 days, 28 days, some yes. months 31. So yeah. it's very rare that your period will always come the same. So Because if it's not 15, then, so it will come, like now, the first time I was having them on the 20th, yeah. to Shafika 15. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that is normal mm. because it's not about the calendar. Mm -hmm. It's about the number of days between your cycle. Okay. So usually for majority of women, that cycle length is fixed. It's either 21 days. And how do we count? The first day of your period is the first day of your cycle. Mm -hmm. So from that first day of this period to the next first day, that's the number of days we are considering your cycle. Mm -hmm. So if your period comes on 15th, uh, let me make it easy. So easy. if your period comes on first mm -hmm. of every month or mm -hmm. around that time every month mm -hmm. and then the next time it comes is again either towards the end if it's a long month or mm -hmm. the beginning of the next month mm -hmm. you're very likely a 28 day cycle person. But you have to count the days. This is not a, again, it's not generalized. Mm. So if we had an example, so nowadays I ask women please, we have technology at our fingertips. Yes. Download an app and register so that you can track your period. Mm -hmm. Because when you come to see me and I ask you when is your last period, they, they, everyone looks at me like, hmm? <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh my. And that's the, yes. the most common question your gynecologist will ask yes. me because it gives me so much information so that I'm able to understand your cycle. Mm -hmm. So if your cycle is regular, you'll be able to be able to say every month it comes around this time. And when you count the days from day one of my period to the next period day one, how many days is that in between? Mm -hmm. It varies from 21 days to 35 days, mm -hmm. and that is normal for the average woman. Mm -hmm. If it's less than 21, if it's more than 35, mm -hmm. you need to see your doctor. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's having very regular periods, it depends on the number of days in their cycle. The easiest um, way to count your safe days is what we call the fixed calendar method. Mm -hmm. So the, the um, standard days method or rather. So that this one assumes that your period falls within 26 to 32 days. Mm -hmm. And if it falls within that time, then there's a fixed time we know that is your fertility mm. window. So between day 8 and day 19 of your cycle, mm -hmm. meaning day 1 being the first day of your period. Mm -hmm. That's the thing to remember. Mm. The marker is always the first day to of your period. To uh, So See, this one you want <laughs> us to do it. We have to do the Stack math. Stack it to pote. Okay. Let's do the math. So if your period so comes on 15. Let's do it first. Okay, with first. For everyone, yeah, so it's yeah. easier. Mm. If my periods are coming on the on first. first. So first... Was the day I'm your a period day started. person. Yes. So first, second, third, it's probably just your period. third I'm done. Yeah. Yes. So if your period came on first, mm. the first day of that period is first. Okay. That's the day one of your cycle. Yes. So if the next period comes on first of the next month, mm -hmm. let's say it was January. Yes. January is long. So yeah. if it's January, you're more likely to get it 28th. Mm -hmm. the next period and mm -hmm. that's why some women will tell you some months I get a period twice mm -hmm. it's just about don't look at the calendar it's about how many days are in the cycle mm -hmm. so if your period comes on first mm -hmm. and then the next one comes on 29th of January because mm -hmm. we're now talking about January yes. your cycle is 28 days mm -hmm. so from day one of this period to day one of the next one so yes. it came on 29 yes how many days are in between 20 28 uh -huh. your cycle is 28 days okay and in order to understand your cycle you have to actually map it for a long period of time so mm -hmm. about three to six months to understand how many days is in my mm -hmm. cycle apps make it easier because now you stop counting mm -hmm. if you find an app and there are many online there's uh, flow mm -hmm. flo there's mm -hmm. clue mm -hmm. Um, C-L-U-E and many others, my period, there's so many apps mm -hmm. now you can use and they are free, mm -hmm. where you just put in yes. period Ikianza, you put that date yes. Ikiisha, you put that date, okay. the app does the rest, mm -hmm. so that when you come to see me and I open, it will tell me your cycles are between 26 to 8, 28 mm -hmm. days and the period lasts mm -hmm. 3 to 4 days or mm -hmm. 4 to 5 days mm -hmm. That app has made it easier so that somebody who wants to use safe days can now, instead of counting and memorizing, yeah. use an app. It's okay. the easiest okay. way. So if your cycle is regular, yes. number one, safe days only work for someone whose cycle is regular. Oh, okay. So if your cycle comes 21 days, next month it's 28, mm -hmm. the next month it doesn't come for three months, mm -hmm. you can't use safe days. Mm -hmm. You don't have safe days. You, you're just, please, first come in and we fix the problem, yes. but you can't use safe days because okay. you can't count. Oh. This, the, your ovulation is too erratic. Mm -hmm. But if your cycle is pretty regular, and most women, it's not going to be fixed. You will find that maybe it's 28 days this month, then it's 26 days, then it's mm -hmm. 27 mm -hmm. days. That's still normal, mm -hmm. but it's just varying with a yes. small number. Yeah. You can use your safe days. Mm -hmm. 
if you have regular cycles and you understand how many days are in your cycle, for someone, and this is very specific, yes. for someone whose cycle falls between 26 mm. to 32 days. Mm -hmm. So if your cycle is 26 days, it's 27 days yes. or it's 28 days, yeah. up until 32 days, you can use that standard days method where day one is the first day of your period. Yes. So your period lasted till day three. Yes. Then you count day four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Up until day eight, you're safe. In short? During the period yes. and just after, you're Haya. safe. Turudi kidogo. Okay. So third. Imeisha third. But to me answer kukesabu from first. first. So my first period is the, the day is we are the counting. It doesn't matter when your period ends. Yes. But first is the day that mm. we start from. Okay. If your period is three days and you don't want to have sex during mm. your period, mm. then the window you have before fertility kicks back in is from day three to day eight. So hey, now my people, I know we are together. Now we are learning. <laughs> now we are learning. <laughs> now yes. we are learning. Yeah. So after day three, so yeah. my periods are gone. Yeah. So the uh, even that last day. Is I is You're it? Fine. I'm fine. You're fine. So day three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from day eight, yes, your fertility window kicks in. Mm. So from day eight up until day nineteen of your cycle, you're going to ovulate and you're likely to get pregnant. So if you're trying to get pregnant, that's the time to maximize. Okay. If you're trying to avoid pregnancy, that's the time to avoid. Either yes. you're abstaining or you're using condoms or yeah. you're using maybe withdrawal, mm. so, such methods. Mm -hmm. So you combine those. If you understand your cycle and it's very regular and you fall within those number of days, mm -hmm. 26 to 32, yes. that's, those are the ones who are easiest to calculate mm. for. So in clinic, if you go to government facilities, we give you cycle beads. They're called beads, in a mm. car rosary, mm. that you count on and you'll be able to see when my days. So it helps you count. Nowadays, it's easier to use an app. Mm. So your app, actually the best thing about the app is it, it color codes your fertility window. Mm -hmm. So the color will change. It will show you my period. Your period is still here. Yes. This white phase, safe. Mm. This phase of blue, mm -hmm. danger. Mm -hmm danger, mm. stay away, mm. and then we go back to safe. Okay. So from day 19 up until, let's say we said your cycle is 28 yes. days, up until day 28, yes. as your next period is about to start, mm. you go back to being safe again. Oh, so I can be safe twice a month. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can be free uh, twice a month. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yes. I will specify, this go is specific on. for those for with 26 to 32 to day regular cycle. cycle. If your cycle is regular but it doesn't fall within that window, because I said you can have from a 21 day cycle through to a 35 day mm. cycle, you have to learn how to calculate because that one is a bit trickier. Yeah. So for those ones, then we use the it's ca standard calendar method mm. where you have to learn how to count. So mm. what we do is we tell you monitor your period for up to eight months and see how many days those cycles are. Mm. Like I said, not everyone will have at every month is 28 days. Sometimes mm. it's 21, sometimes it's 23, mm. sometimes it's 26. Mm. So for someone like that, they'll need to see. January, it was 28 days. The February, it was 26. March, it was 21, mm. like that. And then you have a list of periods and you're able to see from the longest one to the shortest okay. cycle. Once you have seen what your short cycle is, we calculate it like this. We yes. tell you, take your shortest cycle and minus and subtract 18. The number you get is the first day of your fertility mm. window. So if your short cycle was 21 days minus 18, yeah. how, how much is that? Three. Three. Mm. So day three, <laughs> from day three, yes. that's the beginning of it. That's why I'm saying there are people who can get pregnant on their mm, period, period because day three, some people are still continuing yes. their period. Yeah. So from day three, that is the earliest time your fertility will start. Mm. Then you go look at the longest cycle that you had during that duration. Yes. Let's say it was 28 days. Yeah. From 28, you subtract 11. Mm -hmm. So from the shortest cycle, you subtracted 18, yes. we got three. Yeah. From 28, let's subtract 11. Yeah. We'll get? 28 subtract 11. 11. We are going to get 11. 11. 11. Wait. No, 28 minus 17. 17. 17. Yes. <laughs> Maths. Maths. <Please. laughs> so you get 17. Yes. So now you know your fertility window is from day 3 of your cycle mm. to day 17 of your cycle. Mm. So somebody with a 28 day cycle, I mean 21 day cycle, or a cycle that falls outside of the ones we were mm. saying is standard, mm. that period you can see their cycle, their fertility window starts from day 3 of yes. their period all the way through to day 17. Yeah. That person has been able to calculate for herself specifically. That me, the way my cycle is set up, my safe days are uh, from, yeah. uh, I mean, my fertility, yes. the days I can get pregnant are from day three to day, day 17. Yeah. So I need to avoid mm. unprotected sex during that time. Mm. So it depends on the individual. And again, it's confusing even now. It's hard for you to sit. And I know I people know. will be trying to take notes and they're like, ah, but don't worry, what <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm going to make a big calendar 
yeah, so that we can, we can do we can, a presentation. Exactly, yeah. Like this, and then like... This is how to calculate. <laughs> exactly, so to yeah. solve it. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to sort yeah. my people. So again, yes. always, I mm. always say, if you wanted to think about a method like that, come in. That's, this is a conversation. You have had it with you. Imagine. This is how we'll it's do so it. Easy. And me, now there I'll have paper and pen, and I'll be able to say, okay, we have your calendar, you have your app, let me see how your cycles yes. work. These are your safe days. Yeah. These are the days you should be using yeah. protection. Yes. And that's how you calculate and that's, it's one of the things we consider a natural contraceptive method. Mm, come yeah. out with withdrawals. Come out with withdrawals. Yeah. Are withdrawals effective? They have a very high failure rate. But to be combined with safe days, it's actually very effective. Mm. So on its own, no. Because if you don't know your cycles and your ovulating, um, pre-ejaculate, pre-cum also carries some sperm. Mm. So you can easily get pregnant mm. during that time. But for a couple who know the cycles and they have the safe days and they practice combined safe days with withdrawal method, it's they actually have a very high chance of preventing it's pregnancy. It's effective. Mm. I don't want our conversation to end. Imagine <laughs> I love talking to you. What's with contraceptives and allergy? Uh, allergy. Mm. Um, so it, it varies from, again, one woman to another. Uh, it's usually the preparation of the contraceptive. Mm. So some of them, the base preparation, the carrier that yes. is holding the hormone is something you can react mm. to. Other people have such bad allergies that they're sensitive to everything from food to dust to pollen. Mm. So again, contraception for them is a little bit difficult yes. for them to use. So it has to be specified mm. that yes, you come in and tell me as your doctor, these are the issues I have with allergy. Um, we actually even see something as rare as metal allergies. So there are women who cannot wear normal jewelry. Such a woman is more likely than not to react to the copper IUCD. Oh. So she will use the copper and break out in hives yes. or have a rash all over the body yes. and we have to remove the yeah. method. Mm. So all of that again, it's necessary to have that discussion. Mm. So your doctor can be able to know this method will work for you versus yes. this one will not work for you. Wow. Yeah. I want to wind up <laughs> okay. for this particular segment because yeah. me, whether doc you like it or not, you're just going to be our <laughs> resident uh, gyna because, <laughs> uh, man, it, it's been such an amazing conversation. Is there anything you feel like we needed to touch on that we haven't that touched, we haven't on? touched yes. on? I just want to, again, emphasize there are a lot of women who have a negative experience with a lot of things to do with their sexual health and their reproductive health. Mm. And uh, it's something I, I would want to apologize for because it's unfortunate. It's because of many gaps in the system, starting from lack of information or education through to a snobbish medical culture mm -hmm. where you feel afraid to talk yes. to your doctor. You feel like there's a lot of stigma when mm -hmm. you come in and you want to be honest with your doctor. You mm -hmm. feel I, they'll judge me yeah. um, to lack of access because sometimes you, you're limited by money mm. or you don't know that you can go mm -hmm. without paying out of pocket. Mm. So the first thing is your experience is valid. That's the first thing I'd want to say. And also please accept and love yourself yes. so that you take away mm. that shame mm. because you should not be still be living in this mindset that I did something wrong mm -hmm. and it's my fault mm. and I should be blaming myself for the rest of my life because mm. it's very limiting for us mm. as women especially. The other thing I'd want to emphasize and please, please ask women, let's stop demonizing each other. Let's, we're the ones who propagate the gossip and the stereotypes and make women feel bad because either she's having too many babies or she's not having babies. You can't, you can't be, it's the problem is you can't win with our society. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we started to be each other's friends more and lean on each other more and give the right information. For example, if, and it's the best thing I love about our African community mm. is we talk to each other as women. We yeah. actually sit and share and you remove the burden mm -hmm. of the problems mm -hmm. you're having. Mm -hmm. But if someone comes to you and asks about medication, if someone comes and asks you about your contraceptive, Tell them what you're on, but advise them to see their doctor. Yes. Let it start from us so that we develop that culture. Just destigmatize dis those bad experiences mm -hmm. because the more you challenge, even for us as medical professionals, mm -hmm. the more you come in and challenge me, the more I'm reading, the more I have information to share, the more open-minded I become because, again, there's still, yeah. you know, those limitations society-wise yes. where you'll come in and I push my agenda on you as a doctor, mm -hmm. and that's a wrong approach. Mm -hmm. But the more you're coming in and challenging us, I can't always tell you, ignore that. I can't always do that. I actually have to find a fix mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. or refer you to someone mm -hmm. who can help you with these mm -hmm. issues. So I'd want us to continue to foster that relationship between patients and their doctors or yes. patients and their health providers because some facilities, we have amazing nurses, we mm -hmm. have clinical officers. Mm -hmm. Those are your first point of contact. Yes. But the blessing with Kenya is you can access a specialist straight mm -hmm. away if that's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. So I'd want to encourage people to go through that route more than Mitishamba, you know, Facebook, mm -hmm. access to funny, funny things. Mm -hmm. And then you destroy your body. And by the time you come in, it's honestly heartbreaking. Yes. 
to make a diagnosis where I know if you came in a few months earlier, this would be a very different mm -hmm. outcome. Okay. So I would want to encourage health-seeking behavior. Let's become more positive about yes. our bodies. Let's be curious. Learn about how your body works. Mm -hmm. Stop feeling shame. It's part of your body. Yes. <laughs> Stop feeling shame about certain parts of mm -hmm. your body. Understand how it works so that it stops being so scary. And then share the information. Like when you watch a video like this, share it with your friends so that everybody has access and mm -hmm. starts to understand. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying about you, keep having the experts come in because then you have a story that scares everybody yes. and then we debunk those mm -hmm. myths so mm -hmm. that it reaches a point of balance. I love that. That's the most important mm -hmm. thing because then it helps to stop propagating the wrong information. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a favor to ask. Sure. Can you see W? Can I see W? Yes. I, I can start the process? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank I would you. like to. I would like to. I'm happy to meet her. If we can, can just start the process. Meet her and talk to her, just mm. even if it's a general conversation, yeah. and maybe help her walk the journey backwards mm. so mm. you can trace, huh? trace where the like issues where are. Where the issues yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. That would really If she's comfortable with me, I'm not, I'm not opposed I, I to. I would be, be happy. I know yeah. she will love you. I know to she will be comfortable. Thanks, Doc. I can't wait to have you. Like, I just feel like, nah, it's time to put a topic. <laughs> so that we can just have you here yeah. on the show it's but a people will want to reach out to you mm. how, how can they find you so i am available the mm. easiest places you'll find me of course is social media yes. so my handle on instagram mm -hmm. is my name yes. dr claire kinuthia mm -hmm. so if you typed in dr claire kinuthia you'll it's find there. me yes. usually if you want to find me in clinic if you send a dm i'll mm. be able to send you the clinic okay. information okay. my clinic is in upper hill mm. near nairobi hospital yeah. um in mayfair center mm -hmm. so again I i'll give you all the information mm. then you can share with yes. the audience then right. i'm happy to look after yes. anyone who's been struggling who feels like you need more of a rapport with your doctor you're not able to talk to them directly mm. because we as as is we also have subspecialties mm -hmm. so I'll be able to what I can't help you with or something that you feel yes. I need a different type of specialist I'm happy yes. to be able to refine yeah. accordingly. Yeah. yeah I saw another emerging conversation that I think we really need to have mm. IVF mm. there are so many questions my yeah. people questions have. misconceptions misconceptions misunderstanding. misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah. so I hope you can always make time Absolutely. so that we can have these discussions but thank you so much for coming you've thank blessed you my me. soul thank you I live here me. knowing <laughs> no, I, I, I honestly, I live here with a lot of information and mm -hmm. you know it's important even when we bring these conversations for yeah. us to bring in experts yeah. that can be exactly. able to debunk exactly. and that way we are having a very balanced conversation yes. and yeah. we are even adding more value to our content so that really blesses my heart yeah. that we have experts like you. You know how you are recommended? <laughs> <laughs> my DM was just like... <laughs> That's the best news. Which, That's which, the is, best which means you actually really have. Yeah. Because yeah. the people who recommended you are some of the people you've yeah, seen. that I've seen. Yes, yeah, so sure. that means you really have a beautiful connection yeah. with no, your patients. No, my patients, no. With there's your no patients. shyness. There's mm. no, nothing can be embarrassing. Because mm. if you don't ask me, who mm. are you going to ask? I feel like women, we are just ashamed of our of bodies. Of our bodies. And know. it's sad because it starts from childhood. We are shamed from a very early age. So mm. by the time I'm trying to help you unlearn, mm. it's already, the damage has already been yeah. done. Yeah. And that's why I'm hoping that as we continue empowering ourselves with information, then mm. we're able to empower our children yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Mm. Thank you once again Thank for coming. Thank you so much for having yes, me. Yes, my yeah. people, that's just the first episode of you seeing Dr. K on <laughs> our show. I, 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 I would love to reach out to her so that we can be able to tackle some of these conversations that some people will be like, ah, Yossi Yangu, you get it. Also on the comment section, please do let me know what other issues are disturbing you, what other issues would you like her to just come on the show and tackle so that by the time I'm reaching out to her, I also have my because Ababu, even me, some of these things, the many part are off guard. I am like Panadol is the way me I take Panadol. Ha do kabla to funge brufens and cramps. Brufens? Yes. Cramps. People were asking me mm -hmm. like when they have cramps, they, you find that you take a lot of brufens. Mm -hmm. Are brufens effective for cramps? For cramps. So mm -hmm. um, it depends mm -hmm. because there are some women who use brufen mm -hmm. or um, they're called non-steroidal mm. anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. medications. Mm. So brufen being one of them. Mm. There are some women who will use them and not have any issues, especially mm. so for mild cramps. Then yes. there are women who, especially if you're finding you're having to up the dose regularly, mm. then it's not 
for you. Mm. There are many, many types of painkillers that are specific to the uterus yes. and how the uterus works. Mm. So they're more effective for cramps and mm. uh, period pain mm. compared to the ones that you'd use for other general issues. Mm -hmm. So if you've been using Brufen and it's not working for you, then please mm -hmm. go in and see your doctor for a better recommendation. Yeah. Number two, again, Brufen is dangerous for some people. So there are some people like, for example, asthmatics who should not be using such medications. Mm. So again, it's about, please, no. there's no shortcut. I'll always insist. Talk to your doctor first. Ask don't try and questions. take shortcuts. Don't yeah. take a recommendation because you can simply take a medication that for me, I never think twice about and you, you collapse imme mm. immediately. So oh, it's yeah. best to actually ask, ask first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I've tried so much guys handling most of the questions that you have you had for me and if I've not handled any and if there's something that you thought, well, this is a gap, please feel free to tell me that on the comment section so that when doc comes back on our next episode i will i will genuinely start with your questions but i want us to honestly start having these conversations contraceptives and religion should we actually be giving contraceptives to teenagers what kind of education do we need in our country so that we don't do things when we are young and then during our 40s we look back and we are like look at how this thing messed me up simply because there were was no person to sit me down and talk me through how I'm supposed to be using contraceptives. Which ones am I supposed to be using? Even me, when I heard about Depo, I was like, hey, even if I consider contraceptives, I'm never using Depo. But now, guys, able to hear the kind of information that we've gotten on today's episode. So I want you to go on the comment section and tell me what other conversations, especially women and our sexuality, we shouldn't be ashamed anymore. Isn't if it was a and a warning you are gynecologist just ask this very you know the questions that people think are stupid those are the questions you need to be asking because if you don't ask later on in life you will look back and things will have gone so wrong and let me know what did you love about our dog today her contact details are right here those are her social media handles please 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 dm her that's exactly what i did dm'd her all through to when we will do this episode and we are here she's really active also check her platform out beautiful reels in, on her instagram that you can also go and learn from doc do you have a youtube channel not yet but not it's yet coming. please please <laughs> it's coming. i feel like we need one from yeah, you yeah. so that you can be able also to put this information yeah. in your channel where mm. people can just come in learn and learn. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I hope this conversation was really effective for you guys. If you have a story or you want to share your story, my email is right here on the screen. Send a summary and who knows, we could be covering your story on the next episode of LNS. But above all, I want to bring you stories and then bring you solutions. And that's what we've been doing the last couple of years. We just don't want to do these stories. We want to be able to bring you solutions so that we can honestly, honestly continue impacting our society society one story at a time thank you so much for tuning in w i really wish you the best just to thank you once again for coming out and sharing your story with us mm -hmm. and of course if you're looking at my outfit and you admire it you know who this is elegance fashion kenya their contact details are here if you're in a position to get yourself something the shoes included feel free they'll sort you out thank you so much for tuning in my name is lynn googie till next time bye